Hello and welcome to Flipping Through, the internet's number one Mad Magazine news review and interview channel. And today I'm going to be flipping through Mad Magazine number 265, released September 1986. Our price $1.35, which is indeed cheap. Um, before I do that, however, I want to tell you about how you can support this channel. Easiest way to support the channel, hit like, hit subscribe, leave a comment below. Um, if you have any suggestions or ideas for future videos, let me know. See that mad right there? That's mad number 70 behind me. And I picked that up because somebody said, hey, you should really do a first appearances episode on Duck Edwing. And so I didn't have Duck Edwing's first appearance, so I had to pick that up. Um, but you ask and you shall receive. Uh, the other way that you can support this channel is through patreon.com slash flipping through. It's right there, right down below in the description. Um, and that's like a monetary donation. If you do that, you get a pretty sick set of stickers, Potter ZB system of weights and measures. Um, the Potter ZB uh, logo thing that I uh, kind of sketched up and then made real with the help of mad artist. Dalton Vaughn, and friend of the show, by the way. Um, but anyway, I have to thank, I don't have to, I get to thank my patrons because I have patrons, and I really do appreciate that. Thank you to Mark Wolf, Bobby Weigel, Cam Hayden, Ed Meisinger, Doug Guilford, Rob Wilson, Rod Mead Sperry, Andrew Goldfarb, Casey Ori, and Kyle Bridget. Guys, I really appreciate your support, and I hope that I can keep on earning it. Um, with that, let's go to the overhead view. Now, typically, I don't, um, I don't ever read the issue before I record this. I don't even skim it. I just keep it how it is. However, I screwed up the recording, and I screwed it up profoundly. The microphone is muted the whole time, so uh, a half hour of my life went away. So I am kind of familiar with this issue, and usually these videos do go a little faster. Um, but I was going through... <laughs> flipping through my, uh, or like fingering through, rifling through my uh, collection of Mad Magazines. And this one just jumped out. Because uh, why wouldn't it? It's Garbage garbage Pail Kids. Um, and so we have, if you're unfamiliar, Garbage Pail Kids were a, um, they were, it was like a trading card. It would come in like the little um, sealed uh, trading card packages. And there was like, there was other toys or other, um, cards like it like wacky packages and it was just a way to lampoon different things and so this was i guess in a way making fun of like cabbage patch kids but i don't know i'm sure somebody knows like the entire history of garbage bale kids but i don't um but anyway what was cool what was interesting about this is that uh tom bunk like one of the great mad writers he uh he was an artist for Garbage Pail Kids. So very likely, if you have a favorite Garbage Pail Kid, uh, it it was done by Tom Bunk. Um, and uh, you can see why his style would be good for that. But they always had these like alliterative names, like Nauseating Newman. Um, but this precedes Tom Bunk's um, arrival at Mad Magazine. Tom did not arrive until like the 90s. Um, Anyway, then we have Down and Out in Beverly Hills and Hannah and her sisters. Um, right in here, we have a beautiful ad for the winter 1986 super special. Typically, I do try to guess all of these. I'll tell you what, I did not guess them all right. I think when I first did it, I got one, two, three. I got four right because this is Mort Drucker and that's George Woodbridge. And I did not get either of those right. Um Anyway, here we have, um, uh, I, like, I, listen, I, I just filmed this yesterday, but I forget who this guy is already. Muammar Gaddafi. We have this, like, Newmanized Muammar Gaddafi um, cartoon by, I don't know, somebody. This is, oh, from the Greenville Piedmont News. I imagine, I don't know, maybe it was just their cartoonist, their house cartoonist. Uh, what me worry, Muammar is saying. Um I do like this part right here. Uh, the bill to a magazine publisher, to William Gaines, publisher of MAD, from Mike Lowe, address unknown. Psychiatric care to date 11K. 
cost of education wasted, 64K. You know, this, this dude went to a nice school. This is the 80s, and it's 64K. Um, barf bags, $78. Total charges, 75K. Total cost of magazine, $1.35. Cheap. Balance owed me $75,685.69. I enjoyed that. And I do like that they didn't even... They didn't even issue a response to it. They just, uh, um, oh, I didn't notice this. Okay, they just uh, let it hang there. The Mad Minute update. Oh man, I can't, I can't zoom in any further. I really want to get a cassette of the Mad Minute. Um, I just learned about it. So the Mad Minute, if you don't know, is a, it's a cassette tape that um, they would send into radio stations. I don't know if it was weekly or daily, um, but then the station would play it. It was just like a short syndicated thing. It might be like, um, I don't know. They, they have lots of things like they used to have a lot more. Um, anyway, Mad Minute update. Here's something you least expected, a Mad Minute update. The Mad Minute is now entering its third year. What are Mad Minutes? Oh, look at They're gonna explain it better than I did. Um, they are 60 second bits of silliness badly written and poorly performed by longtime mad writer Dick DiBartolo. We don't expect much from Dick, and he never disappoints us. The Mad Minutes are sent free to 120 DJs across the country and are heard on 130 armed forces radio stations around the world. Yes, our armed forces. If you know a local radio de station DJ or a college radio station DJ who would like to receive the Mad Minutes, Nine mad minutes are sent out every seven weeks. Have them drop us a line on station stationery, and we'll do the rest. Send request to the mad minute. Da 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 da. I like that. I but um, I really want to get some. I I wonder how many there were in total. But to me, that seems like a pretty limited collectible. I imagine that would cost a fair amount because there were only 120 produced. Well. No, actually, then there's 130. So 250 produced, still, that's pretty low numbers. Uh, Henna and her sickos. Um, I have to admit, I've never seen this. I've seen about five Woody Allen movies, um, which I liked. They were good enough, I guess. Um, but, uh, you know, he's just, it's always the same person, right? It's, it's usually like, a story with interesting actors and talented actors and Woody Allen. Um, so I don't know. I, it's, uh, he's funny, I guess. I don't know. I'm just, uh, I was just never that big into him. Um, here we have the video maladies. Uh, it'll be necessary to adjust your horizontal hold for the following article. <laughs> so I turned it anyway. That is funny. I didn't catch that. For the past couple of years, a new illness has been sweeping America. Its symptoms are painful, its effects debilitating, and no one ever really recovers from it. But we at MAD wanted to alert our readers to this scourge and assigned one of our top investigative reporters the task of researching and reporting on it. Unfortunately, he died. So we're going to have to fill the next three pages with the following diseased article called Video Maladies. And I love this. Some Don, Duck Edwing and Harry North, they're doing the art on this, which is curious. Like, I don't know. It's, it's just interesting <laughs> that, they're, that they teamed up on that. It's not like, it, it's who did what? I guess maybe these are Harry North. And then like these, did they like, is it like a jam cover or something? Or like a jam thing where they each did different parts of it but this is pretty great a little baby choking to death um, anyway let's keep going so we'll go here at the top here we have uh the video store tape reading next strain oh shoot it's all blurry this is all this is all vcr humor if you didn't pick up on it um now there are um i don't know um, for those of you who don't hear, I like this one, who don't remember, there was a thing called a video. Who am I kidding? I listen, I looked at the demographics. 
Everybody who watches this channel is old. You all remember the video store. <laughs> um, uh, but the video store, I think, is is truly one of those things that has died off that it's uh, it's regrettable. It's regrettable that it no longer exists. But it's also, you know, what are you going to do? You can just stream everything. It's There's truly no purpose in having it. The The sad thing is, is be, that it was so great to go to, to like go through and you would just like sort of discover uh, something new that you just try out rather than like Netflix. Netflix just feeds me whatever it is they think that will keep me watching. Um, so I don't get new and exciting things all that often. You could like, you could ask, you could ask another person to be like, hey, do you have a good action movie that you would recommend? And then they would like sell it to you. You know, they'd be like, try to like pitch you on Die Hard or something. Um, anyway, so that's like, I miss video stores. Um, the, I've already seen every cassette in the store, sweats and jitters. Um, the overactive VCR tape ejector face injury. Oh, this is the one. Um, the forcing yourself to watch a lousy movie just because you're paying rent on it, narcolepsy. That would remind me of like being a kid and sometimes renting a movie and then realizing it was just garbage and trying to run back to Mr. Movies in time where I could like get a different movie and still be able to watch it that night. That did not happen very often. Yeah. Here we have another edition of the hate book, this time a themed one. And boy, it's beautiful. The Mad Sports Fan Hate Book. Um, don't you hate when you discover that your favorite ball player is a junkie? No, no, because that doesn't. <laughs> I think like Frisbee golf players are all junkie. Like we know they're all, <laughs> they're all weed heads, you know? So it's uh, not a surprise. This is beautiful artwork though by, um, by Jack Davis. Um, and I had, I think I may have shared like said something on Twitter about it. Um, I had this moment where I was like, I saw a Jack Davis piece of artwork. It was like a skin diver. And there was like in a clam shell, there was like a creature from the Black Lagoon type character. And it made me real. I'd like, I just thought, how awesome would it have been if Jack Davis got to do a run on Batman? I mean, cause he's like, he's better than any Batman artist at the time. Like, just imagine that level of uh, artistry and, um, like, just this stuff. Like, being able to like, capture, you know, the, uh, what is that called? Like, posture or, like, figure drawing, right? That's what he's, I mean, one of the many things that he's just fantastic at. Don't you hate when a stadium has dozens of beer outlets but only three toilets and two of them are out of order? When I was a kid, the Metrodome, they just had a big trough. You would just all go, you'd all, you just like snuggle up and you'd all just pee in a trough together. It was pretty cool. Uh, kids these days are missing out. Uh, here we have Mads Rock Music Predictions. Um, this was, this is so so as far as writing goes. But I did think it was somewhat interesting to see uh, Paul Coker doing drawing like caricatures of celebrities, right? Like seeing Prince right there. Um, it's kind of interesting. Here's like Tina Turner, I guess, with like just wild hair. I'm assuming that's Tina Turner. I don't know. I didn't actually read the whole thing, um, but it's great. I mean, he has like, I, I like his style. This is like, he's sort of pushing it. I like him more in like a compact area, but this isn't too spread out. So I think it still works pretty well. And here, is just some beautiful Al Jaffe artwork. Follow-up report on progress. Whoop. Everything that's new and modern. A giant step forward for mankind? Hmm? A tiny step forward for womankind? You be the judge as you now read Matt's follow-up report on progress. In the, in the old days, when you were out of the house... When you were out and the house was empty, important messages were never communicated. Now, with the advent of the phone answering machine, messages are always communicated. Hems, this is your boss. Cancel your vacation plans. We need you back at the office now. And don't pretend you didn't get this message. I know your flight isn't until 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Bastard. 
this is one that I, I ended up posting on Instagram and I love it so much because of um, Dick DiBartolo gives Jaffe the opportunity to do the comedic part of it. Um, so if you look at this, it says, back in the days of propeller planes, air travel was only for the rich and affluent. Okay. Um, now, compare, like, uh, the next one. Today, thanks to, I mean, this is, okay, this is what I meant to say. This is just a statement, right? Follow this one. Today, thanks to so many airlines putting so many planes in the sky, air travel is cheap and many more people can afford to fly. Again, just a factual statement, which gives Jaffe the opportunity to depict like what what is the consequence of that? And you have this stampede, there's like this bat, there's dentures and bones flying, there's a guy getting his nose gouged, and then you have the pilot like just dancing across all of their heads. Here you have like a little, uh, I don't know, I guess that's maybe a shadow. I was gonna say Hitler in a toupee losing his hair. Uh, but I appreciate that. I really appreciate that allowing, you know, you don't have to have the joke in the text because sometimes if you do that, it's redundant um, when you get to the, the imagery. Um, now, this is, uh, well, like, like this. Um, it wasn't very long ago that the only kind of soda you could buy was the kind loaded with sugar that would rot all your teeth. And here you have kids drinking soda. It's rotting out their teeth. Today's soda is sugar-free. However, it does contain nutrient saccharin, and other wonderful modern chemicals. Now, here's a nice subtle joke. Is that subtle? I don't know. But he's holding this vial up, and the vial looks like a skull. Um, but I thought this was, this is honestly, like, really, this is a fantastic, fantastic gag right here, this whole thing. Oh, here's my man, Peter pa or Paul Peter Porges. Um, cat thoughts. This is another one that was really good. This is like if Garfield, if Garfield was like a uh, high T and actually said like badass stuff rather than just like is mean to a dog. Look at them. Schmendrick, you're standing in my litter box. Right? I love that. If this was, do you know what this would be? If this is Garfield, it would say, uh, hey, John, could I get more lasagna? Or something. I don't know. Back off doll. I'm altered. And the good news is there's six more where this came from. Walking in with a little cat. And then here, that's her having me declawed. I don't know. I enjoyed this one very much as well. Here's a beautiful, beautiful spy versus spy. Um, I like the use of I don't know. Do I like this use of space? I do, I think. Um, but what I like about it is two weeks in a row, we get a view of a Prochias that has a um, something other than a spy, right? I like how he draws the people. So look, at he's on his typewriter. Kill the black spy. He writes, kill the white spy. Hits return. The register goes flying across. Look at, he's handing him a gun. He's not. He doesn't know what's going on. Boom. Hands him the command. Oh, no. Kill the white side, and this guy just lights him up. I love the, I love how his face just turns red, and like all of these rounds that are getting kicked out, and uh, you know the little holes that it leaves all the way through. I love that stuff. Now this is, um, this this whole thing, like, I, it's okay, it's okay, but it's like, a, it's not really like a driving test. It's more of like a driving. It's just like an ongoing driving joke that looks like it's a test. So it's not all that great. Um, yeah. Well, and then you have to wait. You have to read it. And it's a little confusing up until you get to the scoring, which, you know, the higher the score, you get points for every, like, basically wrong answer. And then you have a great future ahead of you as a New York City cab driver. Apply at once. It's like, it's a really long a really long journey basically and here we have some beautiful harry north artwork with uh writing by charlie Cadu. i'll tell you phil i can't take any more of this please phil do me one last favor pull the plug i can't do that bob that's not a decision i can make 
but it's sheer torture. Can't you understand that? If I was strong enough, I'd pull the plug myself. You shouldn't be talking Bob, that way, Bob. Can't stand it anymore. I'm going nuts. Please, I'll give you my house, my car, anything. Just pull the plug. All right, all right, I'll pull the plug. And it's Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> I mean, maybe not the best, but whatever. It's kind of this, though. This I'm going to spend time on, which is the Reagan. Um, Jerry Gersten with this, like, I just love this. I absolutely love this illustration. It's just, it's beautiful. Um, I really enjoy that style. The Reagan, with apologies to Edgar Allan Poe. Um, I'm going to stay zoomed out, but I'm going to read this whole darn thing. Um, writer is, I'm sure you could guess, Frank Jacobs. Once upon a cold November, back in 80, you'll remember, came to pass a great election with a wondrous change in store. By a landslide, one was winning, promising a new beginning. Tall and proud, he stood there, grinning, like so many times before. Who was he, this cool one, grinning, like so many times before? T'was the Reagan, nevermore. Once he was inaugurated, Reaganomics he created, promising a balanced budget like we had in days of yore. Though, he said, our debt is growing, and a bundle we are owing. I'll cut taxes, cause I'm knowing this will save us bucks galore. Please explain, a newsman asked, how this will save us bucks galore, quoth the raven. Reagan, less is more. Pushing for defense, he pleaded, brand new missiles would be needed. That's the only way, he said, to keep the country out of war. True, he said, they're not required and they're not meant to be fired. In five years they'll be retired, still we must build hundreds more. Tell us why, a newsman asked. We must be building hundreds more, quoth the Reagan. Jobs galore. Was he real or from a movie? Make my day, sure sounded groovy, standing up to Congress or the rebels in El Salvador. Flicks like Rambo he promoted. Several times, it should be noted. Once John Wayne, he even quoted, when Gaddafi threatened war. Does this mean, a newsman asked, we're heading towards a Mideast war? Quoth the Reagan. Hit the shore. This last, uh, lines three and four of this last stanza, I, I'm, I love so much, so I might even read it twice. During times he wasn't dozing, many plans he was proposing, dealing with the deficit which he no longer could ignore. Cuts, he said, I'm recommending, pending our ascending spending, with attending trends suspending, then extending as before. Does this mean, a newsman asked, a balanced budget like before? Quoth the Reagan, nevermore. I just love... I, it's just beautiful. I love this whole thing. Frank Jacobs is a genius. Cuts, he said, I'm recommending, pending our ascending spending, with attending trends suspending, then extending as before. My God. He's just the best. He's absolutely the best. Um, here we have Don Martin looks at weddings. It's almost as if they like had Aragones take the week off or a month off. Because it's set up exactly like that. But unlike Aragones, it's a little more difficult to tell um, which where one starts and one ends. Uh, so they put the numbers up there. And I mean, this is like Aragones does such a good job of like making his characters. He has like... Don Martin is really good at characters, obviously, right? Uh, and they're very amusing. And they're very like recognizable. But Sergio has can draw anybody. And so the characters will look different. He'll also lay it out different. He'll also do this shading different to like draw your eyes in and actually make it seem like a physically different place. Don Martin doesn't do that. So it's, uh, I don't know. This is like, it's, you know, funny wedding gags and everything, but it's, um, it's just uh, not that great. Sorry, Don, I'm sorry. Home Foo. 
Uh, I don't even know what to say about this one. Kung Fu started many years ago when poor Chinese farmers who could not afford real weapons developed self-defense techniques using whatever was available, plow blades, staffs, even benches. Nice idea. But since very few poor Chinese farmers are mad readers, it made very little sense for us to write an article on Kung Fu. So instead, we wrote an article about a self-defense technique the average American could use, a deadly defense called home foo. Here's phone foo, blocking. Uh, blocking the phone conveniently fits over the hand in a way that allows the steel bottom to deflect your opponent's blows in snarling by holding the body of the phone in one hand and the receiver in the other you can use a cord to tangle up your opponent that's very good offense offense by holding the cord at mid length the receiver may be swung and launched at your opponent it may be used for long distance in <laughs> So stupid, but I like it. Uh, if you hate violence, you can still use the phone to call your enemies in the middle of the night and mutter obscenities. Look at this. Writer Rurik Tyler. That name should sound familiar from the Mort Todd interview. Anyway. Uh, much needed rules for some irksome people who inspired them. Oh, let's read the Bill Cosby one. <laughs> I wonder what uh, rule he spawned. Employment as a celebrity spokesman is considered a sideline to an acting career, not a career itself. Now, oh, okay. Sorry, guys. I thought it was going to be the new one, the new version of it. Um, the principal rule. Purveyors of exercise workout books, records, or videotapes must possess some qualification to do so other than looking good in a pair of tights. Oh, I was wrong about <laughs> I was wrong about Aragones taking the week off. Now uh, here we have the mad look at Miss Liberty. Um, so this is like all of it's kind of interesting because um, Statue of Liberty must have been undergoing construction or like rehabilitation because it's like all scaffolded up the whole time um which is uh kind of interesting i mean because i don't i don't remember that oh look how short it is that's fascinating um and then followed by this another unrelated written by a different person uh don martin wedding gag um i don't know there's there's parts of this issue that are really really good and there's other parts that are like a little confusing, to be honest. Here, if uh, superheroes needed extra money, we had artist Angela Torres, writer Bob Sapina. Um, Bob Sapina. Anyway, Sp Spider Man could be a window cleaner. Uh, the Flash could deliver pizzas. I mean, this guy says, "Wow, I just finished ordering it." He goes, "Sir, that'll be three fifty. You still have to wait, Flash, for them to cook the pizza." You're the Flash. You can't cook a pizza faster. That's like you're you're bound by the laws of thermodynamics. So um, Bob Sapina, I'm not, I'm not impressed. All right. Um, and I just, I really liked this. Again, the joke is so-so, but the art is fun on this one, especially uh, the human torch um, being a campfire. I thought that was kind of cute. And now here's something that is... Um, Absolutely just gorgeous illustrations by Will Elder and Harvey Kurtzman. Um, I, you know, he came back for this, but this is, this is almost too hot for YouTube, all right? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> unfortunately, I mean, like, listen, Arnie Kogan went, Arnie Kogan went, ape on this he was like i'm not i'm going to be as lewd as i possibly can be um it's it was it was pretty amazing <laughs> i don't know i feel un listen i feel uncomfortable i know i'm prudish all right so uh save your comments no comment below you you should do that um but yeah it's like it's wild i don't know man i'm not gonna say it out loud uh and then finally, here we go, a beautiful fold-in. 
Animals come in many colors and designs. To get a real feel for this, we must go where the animals flock in great numbers. Only in such large concentrations can we see nature's vivid works of art. At a rock concert. Oh, and then here we go. Uh, the Will Elder Harvey Kurtzman take on the garbage pail kids, the garbage pail adults. So we have, um, you know, the Ayatollah Khomeini, Khomeiniac. Uh, we have, uh, who else? Look at Yucky Arafat, w Wacky Gaddafi. He, he was around for a real long time. But gosh, he just got beat up so bad in Mad Magazine. Um, but these are just lovely. I love these. Um, anyway, hey, you guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of Flipping Through. I hope you enjoyed it. I sure enjoyed flipping through it. Please remember to hit like, hit subscribe, and leave a comment below. If you support me on Patreon, you get these beautiful stickers. Not these ones. Just these four. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful evening. Toodaloo.